I can't do it. I want it no day. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it's, I want to know, dig. <laughs> Don't want to turn my soil. Don't want to kill a microorganism. Don't want to disrupt my mycelium. I want to know, dig. I, I, it's, you know, you can't just wing these things. It is impossible. <clears throat> oh my God. <clears throat> Hi guys. How y'all doing? I can say y'all now because I am I am in the deep south. So it's nice to see y'all. I nice see y'all. Dan S is simmering a big pot of Roselle. Very nice work. Hey Tina. And Amy, man guy dude. Beetle breeding Vincent Gomez. That is fantastic. Um, new tunes for old logos. What about shredded trees from commercial conventional nut orchards? I would not worry about it. Space Squirrel the Majestic. Bunkerman91 says, Greetings from Seattle. I bought your Compost Everything book and have been loving it and your channel. Well, thank you very much. That's, that's, that's good news. That's what I like to hear. I, uh, I don't think composting needs to be nearly as difficult as people have made it, which is why I wrote the book. But I also had some serious problems with contaminated compost that wrecked my garden beds, which inspired me to become a writer. And eventually as a writer, I started a YouTube channel and it kind of, you know, just goes. Florida says y'all, if you are about uh, Orlando North, the problem is, is most of South Florida has been replaced by Yankee carpetbaggers. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Alan. <clears throat> so it says, you guys. You guys. What are you guys doing? You know, whatever. Uh, hey, Cassidy. Irina. Candy Roselle sounds good. Thank you, Firefly Woods. I'm glad to be home. <clears throat> Beetle Breeding Vincent Gomez says, where did you find the sea beans at? I found sea beans uh, at uh, John U. Lloyd State Park in South Florida. Yeah, Colin, I gotta catch up with you. Tis true. Yep, Florida says y'all up here in the handle. That's right. Hey, Karen. Any advice on gorilla gardening? That's a little outside of the scope of this particular one, but uh, I have written about gorilla gardening. Uh, I actually went down the street once with some scion wood from my peach trees and I grafted onto the wild plums hanging over people's fences. <laughs> Let's see. First, paint the gorilla's thumbs green. Very nice. <clears throat> hey, Jimmy. Welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, Donnie. Also in Alabama. Cassidy says, I can't wait to grow Roselle again next year. Laura destroyed my plants this year. Yeah, they, they tend to fall apart. It was John U. Lloyd State Park down in South Florida. How thick of a southern accent can you do? Well, it depends on where you're from. Hey Charles, Trinidad and Tobago. All right, so I have a good topic tonight, and uh, one of the things that is a regular problem, one of my inviolable laws of gardening is that no matter how much compost you make, you never have enough. This is, I mean, have you guys ever made so much compost that you have more than enough for your garden, you're like, gosh, I could just give this away. It's hard to make that much compost. Unless you're actually running some sort of a composting operation. It's, it's like one of those rules of gardening that you can never make as much compost as you need or want. It's like nuts. Um, the, the trick is now, to be careful in your compost foraging. See, I was 
a relentless a relentless forager for organic matter. Back when I was gardening in Tennessee, before I got hit with the, the toxic herbicides, um, I would try to get organic matter from everywhere, anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. So this is how crazy I was. I had an agreement with the local Lowe's, the lady that worked there at the local Lowe's, uh, that uh, if I brought my own bags, I could sweep their parking lot where they had all the, they had the, the, the hay and the straw bales outside of there. They had these like 40, 40 foot shipping container things out there in the parking lot and they would offload you know the bales from there and so there was always a bunch of extra straw and sometimes I get a little bit of alfalfa sometimes I get some uh, pine straw that kind of thing and I could just sweep it up and take it they were used to seeing me there and I would go and I would get bags of it a couple times a week and bring it home I would pick up all the leaves by the side of the road in fall like crazy just like crazy you know I especially loved it when people would put out the bags that had the paper sides, like the Home Depot bags, uh, leaf bags, so the entire thing could be composted, paper and all. Um, I had an agreement with a guy that ran the local espresso shop that if I put a trash can in there, they would load the trash can for me and I could take all the grounds that were in the trash can. <laughs> we did this for quite a while until the health department or something was like, you need to throw those in a dumpster, you can't be leaving a, a trash can in there, which was just ridiculous. Like, here we are recycling, right? No, throw it in the municipal waste. So that was, that was kind of frustrating. But um, I would get a trash can full of grounds every week, and that was awesome. I had so many coffee grounds that I was using it to fertilize the lawn. I would just go out there and wing it, you know, I would just wing grounds all over the grass, let them rot down. Awesome. Uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, had a, a municipal compost mulch pile thing, and you could go down there with a truck and they would load it up. I hired a guy with a dump truck to go down there and get loaded up. I paid him 100 bucks to bring me a, a dump truck full of mulch. And I went with a friend, too, multiple times and, and got trucks full. Um, pickup trucks full. So this was, I was a relentless forager for organic matter. Anywhere I could find it, I would take it. I had a worm bin in the backyard. I would feed those worms. They ate a lot of coffee grounds, so they're really hyper worms. And uh, they, they would eat the fallen leaves that I would rake up. I would take the neighbor's leaves. I would take all the leaves from my yard. It was a, I was a serious composter. Everything. I was an indiscriminate composter of everything until 2012. In 2012, the Mayans predicted the end of the world. Well, at least that's what people think. But it was the end of my world, even if the calendar didn't end, it was the end of my endless gathering world where I thought I was so good at doing this composting thing, <clears throat> and I was. I was a serious recycler. I even got all of the shredded paper from the office where I worked. I would, they would save it for me, bags of it. I got the, when, when we had church picnics, I would take all the paper plates, the bones, the scraps, everything, and I would pick the plastic utensils out of it and take trash bags of stuff home compost it. But it all ended in 2012 when I was putting in a new garden and I said, and I was at a, a new piece of property and I said, okay, I'm going to buy some manure because there's a guy, you know, my uncle told me, hey, this guy will sell you manure for uh, 30 bucks a tractor scoop, great big tractor scoop of rotted cow manure and you just bring a trailer down there and they'll load it for you you can borrow my trailer we'll, we'll do it so I had him give me a double scoop of 
this rotted manure from a local dairy farm. And I spread it all around my yard. And it looked beautiful. It was definitely well rotted. But then the leaves started to curl on different plants. The mulberry in the front yard leaves started to curl. I had planted a whole new row of blackberries across the whole front of my yard, like like 100 feet of blackberries. Every four feet, 25 plants. And I think I paid $9 a plant, but that was painful. They all the leaves started to curl. Pecan trees that I planted, leaves started to curl. My garden beds, the, I had put out some tomato transplants, they started to twist up. My eggplant transplants started to twist up. Everything started to twist up. It looked like there was a serious problem. The first thing I thought was, was there too much nitrogen in this stuff? Did I like roast them or something? Because they turned green. Like they were picking up plenty of nitrogen, but I thought, oh, I'm like burning them. But it doesn't look like that. It looked, it looked really weird. Is this some sort of virus? <clears throat> but how can I have a virus that's in my bean plants, my tomato plants? My mulberries, my blackberries, why are all my plants looking weird? I had spread the manure a couple of weeks earlier. I didn't put two, to, two together for a little bit until suddenly I was like, wait a minute. Um, I had had a master gardener friend over, Joe Late Vidal. And Joe is a master gardener in Marion County. She's a great gardener. She writes great articles. Um, she uh, she had been over to the house with her husband for dinner, invited them both over, and I said, hey, I got this gigantic load of manure, I've already spread it around most of where I need it, but I still got extra, you want to take some home with me? She's like, oh yeah. So she took a few five gallon buckets home. So when all of this stuff started twisting and curling, I was like, oh, okay, something's weird. Something's really weird here. Um. I was like, oh shoot, what if it's the manure? What could cause that? And so I was like, manure, leaves curling, problems, you know, virus leaves curling, too much nitrogen leaves curling. What, what could it be? Yeah, manure. So I come across this article on a, a community garden that got completely wrecked by long-term persistent herbicides after they brought in some horse manure and they composted it and then they spread it around the community gardens and then tons of plots in the community garden everybody's vegetables got ruined okay so i find out this stuff <clears throat> dow agro sciences makes this this garbage uh it's amino pyrrolids and so um it's in grazon next and grazon this and grazon that G-R-A-Z-O-N, but it's in other things too. Aminopyrrolids and pyrrolids and clopyrrolid. There's a few of them, but the aminopyrrolids are the one that hit me. Hit me bad. And it just trashed. Trashed my gardens. And none of the stuff that got hit by it recovered. Like, it looks green and it sits there and the, you know, the leaves curl and it just sits there with curled leaves for months and doesn't develop. Because amino pyrrolids uh, inhibit the cell stacking function in the plant and wreck it. So, that was when my world was shattered. <clears throat> when somebody said, hey, do you want a, uh, a truckload of uh, rotted manure? I said, no. Do you want a truckload of rotten hay? No. I don't. Because... I got hit. Man, I've been burned. And I could never have that kind of relationship again. I got burned so bad. So bad. Pain. I just can't attach anymore. So, the, the big problem is the persistence of this herbicide. And after I wrote the story of it, for Natural Awakenings magazine, and then uh, Mother Earth News asked me to write about it. And then I ended up writing Compost Everything a couple years later uh, on how you could compost and avoid some of these things. <clears throat> and after I called my master gardener friend and I said, you know that manure I gave you? What happened? Did you use it? She goes, oh yeah, I gave it to my tomatoes. I said, your tomatoes acting weird? 
She said, you know, come to think of it, some of them are getting this weird curling thing. I don't know if it's a virus or what. And I said, I'm really sorry. That manure was poisoned. I had no idea. I'd never heard of this kind of thing before. And they really have only been using it, apparently, since like 2007 when it was approved. So this is something that's still not catching up to everybody, but people are starting to realize it's a serious problem. I mean, I was, I wrote an article on, uh, you know, the hidden danger of straw bale gardening. Look, they're spraying it on grasses. They're spraying it on grasses. It's approved for grains and grasses and hay. And they spray it to control broadleaf weeds. So it kills everything, you know, almost everything, like broadleaf. So it kills your wild blackberries and spiny pigweed and stuff like that. Uh, and it leaves the grasses alone. The grasses can keep growing, the animals can go graze on it. It's a, it's a selective herbicide, but it's a persistent herbicide. It sticks in the soil for a long time. So I, uh, you know, I wrote this article some years ago for uh, the Grow Network, The Hidden Dangers of Straw Bale Gardening, because I don't trust that the straw doesn't also have potentially some long-term herbicides in it. And uh, I got totally attacked by the author of Straw Bale Gardening who came in and he says, you know, unfortunately on websites like this, they like to stir up controversy, you know, in order to, in order to sell clicks and advertising and blah, blah, blah. And he basically, he accused me of lying, he accused me of trying to manipulate people, all this stuff. And of course, you know, and of course, trying to accuse me of, of um, spreading misinformation so I could make money off of clicks. First of all, I didn't make any money off of clicks that way. Um, uh, no, I did at that point. If 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 one of the like gardening uh, courses or something that they had on their site, yeah, it, if it if it if they clicked through it, I had the affiliate thing, so I would get money off of advertising. But that's the case with with basically almost every website. You get paid for that, but it wasn't a matter of trying to pick pick up clicks it was a warning to people. And instead of just coming in and saying, no, here's the reason why this isn't good, you know, he accused me of lying and manipulating and all this kind of stuff. So I didn't even bother having a conversation with him. And then later he stopped by my own website and attacked me and stuff. There's some really funny, um, some really funny stuff I did uh, related to it. But anyhow, people like that author we're not getting what a dangerous problem this is, and they're kind of downplaying it. And so you'll still read all these articles online repeating over and over again. Manure is one of the best fertilizers for your garden. Manure is one of the best fertilizers. Yeah, it was. It's not right now. It's not safe. Now, if the cows eat the grass that has been sprayed, this stuff is so persistent, it goes through the cow's digestive system into the manure. You can compost the manure, spread the manure on your garden six months later, and your garden dies. With the exception of sweet corn, which is grass. You know, your sweet corn will be fine. So it's not safe. And the same stupid stuff is getting spread over and over again. Give us manure, you know? And I keep having people go, hey, guess what? Somebody just gave me this big truckload of, uh, of rotten horse manure. I'm like, don't use it. What do you mean, don't use it? Don't use it. You're, you're flipping coins. You're putting a loaded trailer up to your head and pulling the trigger. What is that? Does that look like a trailer? It's like a trailer. All right? So don't do it. You don't know. But it's, it's a bigger problem than people think. So uh, I get asked regularly, you know, what's safe? Now that you've said, <laughs> Manure may not be safe, and grass may not be safe, and hay may not be safe, and maybe straw isn't safe. What about the bagged manure that's sold at the store? I wouldn't trust that either. Well, what about you know, mushroom compost? What about purchased compost? Do you know if your purchased compost is getting manure from a dairy farm? Do you know if they're throwing old rotten straw or hay in there? Do you know if maybe they're, you know, cutting a municipal lawn or something that's being sprayed with a long-term herbicide and dumping that in there? We don't know. So it's Russian roulette again. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here today is first we'll talk about what is not safe in composting and beyond the herbicide. Sort of things, and then we're going to talk about what is safe. 
Uh, but first I want to thank coffee and tea, which are two of my favorite things, with a cute doggy. Coffee and tea sends a $5 super chat. Says, God bless you and your family. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Appreciate the tip. Um, so let's talk about what is not safe first. And let's talk about what is safe. So first of all, I don't trust biosolids. Well, that was a very pretty, was it? I don't trust biosolids like mill or I don't trust heavy metals, they keep me up at night. So, biosolids. I don't trust biosolids. Biosolids are, you know, basically when they, they take the, uh, the sewer system of a city, are they, you know, septic treatment plant, that kind of thing? They take it, they treat the material, and they use it for a fertilizer. It's not because it's not a good idea to recycle human waste. I think that's a fine idea. I, I don't mind composting toilet systems or, or even pit toilets or whatever, you, you know, whatever. If you want to reuse it, you, you can reuse it safely. That's great. Plant, you know, put an outhouse out there for a year or two and then plant a tree over the remnants of the outhouse hole, fill it in, put, put a tree over it. That's great. Cool. But the biosolids thing weirds me out, and the reason it weirds me out is because of the heavy metals and the other compounds that may be in it. Uh, when you're dealing with a big city situation where you think of, wow, what could be going down those drains? What's going down the drain at the hair salon? You know, what's going down the, gray, the drain at the auto, uh, you know, the mechanics? What about the body shop? What about uh, all the weird stuff that gets flushed down toilets? You know, there's a, there's a lot of junk in the sewer systems. <clears throat> and I don't trust that junk. I, I think, you know, if you were just dealing with the biologicals and you sterilize them and you reuse them as a, you know, as a manure or something, that's fine. But you, it's, it's you know a lot of it's not separated, so you get the you got the problem with the contaminants, and uh, if you're taking it and spreading it out in your fields, say it has a small amount of arsenic in it, small amount of cobalt in it, you know, small amount of polonium, I don't know. Over time, as it accumulates, you could end up with a serious problem, and you could end up with a toxic waste site. So I don't like that. So biosolids I don't like, and so sometimes if you're getting municipal compost. Uh, some of the commercial composting type systems will use biosolids, so it's important to find out are you using biosolids or not? How comfortable are you with the potential contaminants you know, in biosolids? I am not, so I don't like that. So I won't use anything that has biosolids, which writes off a certain amount of composting programs. Next one. Number two, what is not safe? Hay. Hay is not safe because hay fields are often, they're recommending that they be sprayed with these long-term persistent herbicides to select out the weeds and, and you get you know, the hay instead. Just grasses, that's great. So you wanna grow a perfect hay field, you, know, you spray this stuff, kills off all the broadleaf weeds, you know, the really irritating stuff like spiny pigweed and the grass looks really beautiful and great, but then if it breaks down, Pardon me. You break it down into compost, that that thing is persistent and that poison is persistent, so I don't like that at all. Um, and hay, of course, if it's fed to your animals, so if you've got rabbits and you're feeding them grass hay, uh, that's not safe. If you are feeding your goats grass hay, then their manure is not safe. If you're feeding your cows grass hay or your, your, your horse, it's great. I mean, I've had people make fun of me uh, talking about this. They're like, I've been using horse manure for years. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Hey, manure is one of the best things for your garden. I'm like, that's because you're stupid. That's because you're not paying attention to the way the rules have changed. You are too stupid. And eventually you will get hit. 
All right? So, I mean, it's so, come on, you gotta be kidding me. But, you know, I mean, you, this is what you have to deal with. I have this video, you know, why manure can destroy your garden. This is not me um, being a, uh, you know, paranoid chicken little. This is a warning. You can take the warning or you can leave the warning. But if you leave the warning, chances are you're eventually going to get hit because a lot of people have written me and sent pictures and said, hey, is this that stuff you were talking about? I got some hay or I got some manure or I bought some compost. The next one I don't think is safe is straw. We do know that uh, grains are often sprayed with, um, you know, they're sprayed with stuff like Roundup to kill them off for harvest to dry them down instead of letting them go the natural way. You know, when they get to a certain stage, they get sprayed with uh, herbicide and then they're harvested. This happens. So we do know that there's some of that in there. I'm not as concerned about glyphosate slash, you know, Roundup. I'm not as concerned about that destroying my gardens. I don't want it anywhere near my gardens. I don't want it in my compost, but I'm not worried about the residues killing the garden for the next year because it does break down much faster. What I am concerned about is, are they spraying, you know, long-term persistent herbicides in the fields? I can't find good data on it. It has been approved for some crops I've heard, but I don't know. So I don't know. So I avoid straw. It's a question mark. I already know that it's being, conventional straw is at least being sprayed, often being sprayed with some uh, herbicides. I just don't know if it's the worst of all herbicides. So then the next thing that's not safe is manure. Now, <clears throat> there are some caveats on this. If you are um, raising your own animals, so you're raising your own animals, you got a farm, you have a closed loop, right? So let's say you, you're in a, a mild enough climate that you um, have grazing year round for the animals, you're not buying in any hay, that's fine. Use manure, no problem. You know you're not spraying, you know that they're not, you're not buying anything that's been sprayed. So do that, that's great. And manure is one of the best amendments in the entire world. It's fantastic, it's like, it's just, animals and plants are made to go together. But if you are buying in hay for your animals, it's unsafe. You know, unless you know that it's totally organic, unsprayed hay, and in that case, great, use it. Um, so the manure is going to be safe if your animals are fed on organic hay or, or, or you're just closing the loop. Maybe you hay your own field, that's great. Maybe you forage along the roadsides to feed your rabbits, you know, giving them Biden's Alba, uh, you know, giving them whatever you could find. Maybe you grow a Moringa for them, that kind of thing. That's great. It's fine. The manure is also going to be okay in that it won't have the really destructive long-term herbicides in it if you are only feeding alfalfa. Alfalfa or peanut hay, right? So that's legume hay. If it's not a grass hay, because the, remember this stuff only selects for grasses, it destroys the broadleaf weeds and things. So if you are if you're feeding your animals um, if you're feeding your animals alfalfa or peanut hay or whatever, don't worry about it. But if you're feeding them grass hay, be very careful. Grass clippings may or may not be safe. If your neighbor's yard is a mess and they give you their grass clippings and they don't have Kemlon coming over, whatever, great. I would use those. If they're not out there spraying stuff, I don't care if it's, I don't care if they're using chemical fertilizers. I do care if they're using weed and feed because you don't want atrazine in your there, you know, if they're using any kind of herbicides, just say no. But if they want to give you grass clippings and the grass clippings are, um, you know, from just grass that's just growing, it doesn't really matter if they use chemical fertilizers. The grass will use whatever it wants and, and you know, it'll be fine to use. It's the, it's the pesticides uh, and herbicides that are the real danger. So I don't like either of those in there. Um, mushroom compost. Barbie. The mushroom compost thing. Mushroom compost used to be 
one of the best composed you could get in all the wild west rich and earthy tended by mycelium but now you might kill your garden if you go buy some mushroom gum post it ain't safe mushroom compost contains herbicides sometimes sometimes very unfortunate I had uh, somebody send me some pictures of damaged plants because they had bought a load of mushroom compost. So I don't buy mushroom compost anymore because I don't know what they grew the mushrooms on and they may have grown them on, again, there's your hay, could have been hay, could have been some manure from a, a, a dairy farm or whatever. Whatever they use, we don't know that it's safe and occasionally you get a batch that will kill your garden. It's terrible. So here we go again, right? Oh my gosh, but the best size of the manure, the mushroom compost, like I wish right now I could buy a truckload of mushroom compost and put it in my backyard. But I can't. I don't trust it. Not after I saw those pictures of twisted peppers. That is not what I like to see. And then again, purchased compost. Uh, there's Gainesville Gardening Group, and they bought some garden soil that had been prepared by a guy who was well known for making really good soil mixes, etc. Well, guess what? This batch had some compost in it. Apparently, that had come from a field that had been sprayed. And so the purchased compost, which was so beautiful and earthy and it smells great and it looks great, that everybody spread around their gardens and everything, it wrecked this guy's operation. Everybody started having all these twisting leaves and stuff and going, hey, what happened? It all comes back to this one compost soil guy. He goes out of business. He didn't know. He got nailed. They got nailed. Everybody gets nailed. It's no fun. <coughs> And then the last thing I don't put in my compost I don't really want is uh, cat manure because of toxoplasmosis. Uh, if you want to use cat manure, uh, you can bury it in the ground and then plant a tree over it or something, but I wouldn't put it in your compost pile. I really don't want to turn into a crazy schizophrenic. So, now, biosolids, hay, probably straw. Manure, grass clippings, mushroom compost, purchase compost, cat manure. That's the what is not safe on my list. Now you'll note that, you know, I didn't say it's not safe to compost meat or bones. Yeah. This is the sort of stuff people are like, oh my gosh. You can't compost those things. There's this list of rules and it says no meat. Oh my gosh. You can't do that. But yes, you can. You absolutely can compost meat and you should. Look, if an animal's gonna give its life, you better use every bit of that animal. If an animal has to give up his life or her life, I must add to be politically correct. Or its life, maybe I should say, or their life, maybe that's better. Anyhow, better use all of that animal. Compost that meat safely. It really doesn't take much. Bury it in a pit. Bury it in the compost hill. You can compost meat. So, it's fine. What is safe? Meat. That's meat. Meat is number one. That's fine. Just put it in your compost pile. Just make sure the vermin don't get to it. You know, the dogs will dig your compost pile up or whatever. But if you have a, a good enough compost system, compost bin or whatever that's vermin proof, which I recommend, particularly if you're in the city, <clears throat> you know, keep the mice and the rats and the wandering dogs and the toxoplasmosis out of it. Throw the meat right in the middle of the compost pile. No problem. Don't worry about it. Meat is super high in protein. That's really good. That's great. Use it. Meats high in protein. Protein means high in nitrogen. So use it. Throw the compost pile. Hot compost pile, you can digest. It will digest all that stuff. Throw a lasagna in there, it doesn't matter. 
Um, manure from animals not fed purchased grass or feed, like I said before, that is safe. If you're raising rabbits, you're feeding them alfalfa, you're not feeding them hay, that's great. You know, cut your own grass from the backyard, great, do it, cool. Um, well, Bill's Hobby says, how about fat? Yeah, you could, I, look, I leave the fat on the meat and let it break down. If you had like a big vat of fat, that doesn't break down very easily. You could pour it in a hole in the woods, it'll eventually break down, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But if I had like grease in the pan, I don't care, it's gonna break down. It's gonna break down, something will eat it. Not a big deal. Uh, cottonseed meal. Cottonseed meal is safe. Now, the problem with cottonseed meal is that it has the potential to have um, <clears throat> long-term pesticides on it, which I don't like. And the, you know, the, the fact is, is it safe for the plants? It's not going to kill your garden to put cottonseed meal on it. Is it safe completely as like the great, a great amendment that would be a good, you know, organic amendment? I'm not sure. I do know that it's, you know, the meal is from the center of the, the cotton, you know, the seed itself. So I'm not as worried about it as if they were, you know, herbiciding the entire plant and shredding the whole thing. I think it's less likely to have as much inside of the cotton bowl, uh, less pesticides on it. Just like I don't worry that much about coffee being sprayed with pesticides because the bean of the coffee is inside a casing, the coffee cherry on the outside, the bean is on the inside. So I think that the, you're going to have less residues in there except for what the plant takes up. But cottonseed meal is safe in that it won't destroy your garden, so I don't mind using it. Uh, and of course, alfalfa and peanut hay, they're safe because they're not a grass. <clears throat> Human is safe, yeah, but you've got to let it break down for at least a year or two. Break down in a good, good situation. I mean, you have a big cesspit, that's not a good idea, but throw it into a regular compost pile, no problem. Uh, wood chips are generally safe. Uh, I have never heard of any problems with wood chips whatsoever, so I'm not going to even say generally. I'll just say wood chips are safe. Wood chips, uh, because they're coming from trees, they're not coming from sprayed fields. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, the trees will take up a little bit of toxins out of yards and that kind of thing, but it's so small I would not worry about it. Nature can break stuff down eventually. And if it's, you know, the tree, the trees are getting chopped up and shredded or whatever, I don't care. Uh, I like to have big piles of wood chips when I can get them to just sit and rot down over time. It's excellent. Just let that stuff rot down over time. It makes really, really nice compost. It's very good for lasagna gardening, for perennial beds, for your fruit trees and all that kind of stuff. Uh, wood chips are fine. Leaves are going to be fine. Uh, unless the leaves are maybe mixed up with grass clippings on one of those Kemlon lawns. So if you see that somebody has raked up their leaves and they have a lousy looking lawn, that probably means they don't spray anything on their lawn, so the leaves are probably fine. <laughs> I had my neighbors throwing leaves over the fence in multiple different houses, so yeah, just give me your leaves. Leaves are usually fine. Chicken manure is usually fine. The chickens are, are often not, they're not fed the grasses, so it's like, you know, soy and wheat or whatever junk they put in the chicken feed. It's not great stuff, um, but the chicken manure itself is really good. It's safe for composting. It's safe for the garden. Just make sure that you don't put it like really hot into the garden because it will torch it. I tried to very carefully side dress some kale plants one year. I wanted them to grow faster, so I side dressed with, with chicken manure that was fresh, and I still burned them. So it's best to let it rot down a little bit, or even better, mix it into the leaves. If you've got leaves and chicken manure, you can do a thin layer of chicken manure, a big layer of leaves, thin layer of chicken manure, you know, Six inches of leaves, like a, like a half an inch of chicken manure, and wet that all together. Man, awesome, works really well. And chemical fertilizers are safe. And one of the reasons I've switched to using some of the amendments that I, I hadn't used before, like del deliberately buying like Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate, or buying potassium sulfate, is because I know that these are, are from the lab, they are exactly the compound that they say they are, they're not they don't have biosolids in them. They don't have persistent herbicides in them. You know, they don't have pesticides in them. I mean, isn't that, it's, it's really sick. But you know, somebody wrote me today and they're like, I would not use 1010, 10, 10, 10 in my garden bed. 
I only use organic stuff. I'm like, yeah, but it's the organic stuff that killed my garden. It's like we're getting forced into this stupid paradigm. You know, if you use, you know, you should grow organically. Oh, by the way, all the organic stuff is poisoned now. So you're better off using 10, 10, 10. This is sick. Something's really wrong. <clears throat> the whole system is really screwed up. Because 10, 10, 10 will burn your soil out. But it won't kill your plants. Like with making them turn twisting and sick or whatever, use 10, 10, 10 according to the label. It's so messed up. Um, it really bugs me. I did the organic gardening thing. Uh, like 30 years. Since I was a kid. Okay, I think I switched to the organic thing. I was on as a teenager, 25 years maybe. So, uh, you know, it's like chemical fertilizers are bad. Chemical fertilizers are bad. Chemical fertilizers are bad. I'm going to get some well-rotted cow manure and feed it to my gardens because I am an organic gardener. And then they all get destroyed. It's, it's almost, it almost seems deliberate. It really does. It is so frustrating. And it's, it's so easy to not have happen just say we can't they can't use this garbage just say you have to do things in a little more difficult way you can't use this nasty toxic long-term poisonous garbage i wouldn't be surprised if at some point they killed me for writing about this and and putting in my videos i really wouldn't you know how much money is involved with this stuff one day, David the Good dies in his garden, and they'll say, you know, he, he uh, was very sad. He was out there to record a video, and uh, he fell over, and he fell onto a, a mulberry that he had just planted, and it still had, like, the bamboo stake in it, and it just went right through his heart, you know. Choked to death. <clears throat> eating organic citrus, you know, I don't know. It's nuts. Um, <laughs> uh, Steve Solomon says, hey Steve, nice to see you. Steve Solomon says, did you know the Israeli rabbit makes 90% of its income from supervising kosher food rules? I did not. Wow. Steve says, the rules of what constitute organic make as much sense as the rules of kosher food. Yeah, I've read the, I've read the Old Testament multiple times, and the, the actual rules in the Old Testament on what you can eat or what you can't eat are not nearly as complicated as the rabbis made them later on. Like a lot of the stuff says, you know, you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk, meaning you don't, you don't like take a, a kid, a goat, not a human, and you don't boil it in its, in its mother's milk because it's just kind of cruel and messed up. And they'll take it and say, you can't have meat and milk uh, together. It's a little bit of a stretch, but then they'll say, okay, but you can't use the same plates or bowls to prepare meat and milk products. Like it's, it's even way, way more separated. So there's a lot of stuff you go, well, wait a minute. You know, when you hear of some things that are approved as organic amendments and you go, wait a minute, like blood, Blood meal or bone meal, those are organic, but um, you know potassium sulfate is not. Potassium sulfate is the straight compound. Blood meal or bone meal have who knows what else from the slaughter waste stream, you know. So it's pretty strange. Is anaerobic compost safe? Yes, I believe so. I, I uh, I've used that. I would not use the tractor supplies. Uh, straw. Seabird guano should work very, very well. <laughs> David the Good did not kill himself. Thank you for that, Boo Bear. I will be memed. <clears throat> Steve says there was a reason not to cook a kid in his mother's milk. The idol worshippers did that as a magical act. There's That's cool. That's a, There's another reason not to do it. And there's a lot of stuff that we don't get because of the culture that was around it at that point. Um... Just make sure to go on record saying you're not suicidal. I am not suicidal. I have never been suicidal because it is just too awesome being me. 
Um, <clears throat> anyhow, so, <laughs> traveling death by deer. Now that's actually possible. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Alright, so, I want to thank a few people here, and then we'll get back to the topic, but I want to welcome uh, Sir Hat, new member. Welcome. I've seen you around for a long time. Thank you for becoming a member. Thank you, Liberty Not License. Welcome. And uh, <clears throat> Sir Hat says, the company changed its name to Corteva, spun off from Dow. I did not know that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Beach Bear says, bought a Costco-sized bag of Scott's Turf Builder Weed and Feed in February before starting listening to you. I think it's using something to kill broadleaf weeds. Throw it out. I wouldn't use it. I mean, if you're just using it on the grass, I guess you could use up the rest of it. But yeah, find somebody else that wants it. I wouldn't put that stuff in my yard. I don't want it in my trees. I don't want it to get any of my food. I want to be able to use the grass clippings without the little bit of atrazine or whatever's in there. Atrazine's not particularly good. Um, let's see, I'm going to answer some questions here. I also want to uh, thank Karen very much for the super chat. Much appreciated. Let me see here. We have, uh, oh, two and a half acres says, I have some videos of growing Moringa. Do you have any growing? Not at the moment. I shall. I actually bought some, some more seed trays. I ordered them online and I accidentally shipped them to my mom's house, which is like, uh, 12 hours drive away on accident because I have so many uh, different addresses. Whoops. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Keep going. Carolyn says, this is why I want my own wood chipper and shredder so I can make my own. I don't trust the other. It's a good idea. I, I have had problems with um, dead from a grazon deficiency. That's funny, Brian. Uh, that's one of those things. I have looked at the wood chippers and shredders, and they just seem like they're always having some issues, and I just haven't quite done it. Firefly says, excellent info, straightforward. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Cassidy says, D to the G, I need ideas for using trees. Fallen in a hurricane, lost 90% of farm trees in lower. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, there's quite a few things. <clears throat> there are quite a few things that um, you can do with those fallen trees. First of all, you can make biochar out of them. Second of all, this is one of my favorite things. If you know anybody with a sawmill, if you have any of those trees that have a good enough size to the trunk, I, I have almost cried, if I ever cried, which I don't. If I cried, I would have cried over some of the trees that I saw down here in Alabama that were chopped into pieces with chainsaws rather than being put through a sawmill. Holy moly, man, if you've got a great big tree, find somebody with a sawmill and have them cut it up or just give it to them to cut up. It's just, it's a, it's a waste of a beautiful tree, waste of beautiful wood. I mean, boy, some of these longleaf pines, that's some good stuff. Um, so that's one thing you can do. You can make biochar, you can have them, you can cut them up. You can chop them into pieces smaller pieces, put them around your fruit trees, put them into your um, perennial areas, use them for borders, and boundaries. Uh, I, I like to have chunks of wood all over the food forest area when I build a food forest because as it rots down, it provides places for lizards to live, it provides places for beetles to live, it provides some wildlife habitat, but it also becomes a bunker for fungi. And as it rots down, the mycelium and everything move through there and they rot it down. Trees like to grow on the remnants of other trees. So, you know, if it's fallen down, chop it into pieces and use it. Uh, you could also try and do hugo culture if you wanted to. <clears throat> Steve says, I am just a simple garden writer who ate so much organically grown food without balancing the soil that I lost my teeth. So Steve, Steve is the one that's been uh, working with me on the micronutrients mix uh, 
And if you have not read his book, The Intelligent Gardener, I highly recommend it, especially if you're interested in nutrient-dense food. And Steve continues, God led me to discover the truth of how to grow nutrient-dense food. And, you know, he tells a, he tells a story of, of going on vacation for a time and having his teeth get better while he was on vacation because of food that he was eating. Better than his homegrown organic food, even though it was commercially farmed. And you know why? Why would commercial produce be more nutrient dense than the produce grown by a very good gardener using all organic practices, making big piles of compost, doing everything that you should do? Why would going on vacation and eating food that was probably sprayed with pesticides and used chemical fertilizer on, and then his teeth start to get better, his joints feel better, he feels more healthy than he's felt in years, eating poisoned food. Why do you think that would happen? It's weird, isn't it? It's because of nutrient density. Because not all soils are created equal. You can compost a lot on really poor soil, but if you don't add in the elements that the soil needs, you are not going to get the nutrition that your body needs. It's not there. So, um, it's, a, it's a very interesting story, and a lot of the research that uh, Steve has dug into is very useful. His Soil and Health, um, soilandhealth.com, has a lot of free uh, books on it, too, that are useful. Lucas says, try biochar with these trees. Yeah, I think so. Hookah culture is a possibility. How about worm castings? I love worm castings. Worm castings should be safe unless those worm castings, hey, if they're growing them on straw or they're growing them on hay, I wouldn't trust it. You could build a fort with the downed trees. Thank you, Rosehaven Farm. That's funny. popular fire in homes too that's true almost thought says any remedies for kogan can't type tonight yes kogan grass the best way to get rid of kogan grass is to move that's that's my recommendation um kogan grass is actually the only time i ever sprayed an herbicide Coca grass is, I, I tried pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and they were not going to give me a nursery license unless I removed it. Insane. That stuff is awful. You can till it repeatedly, um, but you try to crush it out with stuff and it pierces right through it and it comes back again. Absolutely horrible. I recommend just torching it with whatever herbicide you want to torch it with and not gardening over that area, letting it come back and then torching it again and letting it come back and torching it again. Um, I. I don't, I don't ever recommend herbicides, but in the case of this one, I would destroy it and then go organic later. It is so nasty. It is such, it is, it is, uh, in my book, that would be the number one worst invasive plant in the world, and I normally like invasive plants. <coughs> That's right, Sir Hat says, because you have a closed loop that doesn't have enough nutrients. There you go. There you go. Teeth will get better with sea salt. Yep, and this is why we add kelp meal. Nutrient density. And all little things, sodium, molybdate, you know. 
um, those, it's those little pieces. It's why when I made uh, Dave's fetid swamp water, why I tried to grab materials from all over the place. Nancy, he was on a volcanic island. When Steve, when Steve was eating the food, the commercially produced food, it was the micronutrients in the food that made it feel better. <clears throat> Crazy, huh? It actually, coconut grass comes back after you light it on fire very, very well. Javier says, do mushrooms really help a lawn? I hear they have a symbiotic relationship. Yes. Yes. Um, it's not necessarily that they're symbiotic with the grass. It's just that they will break down organic material and make it available to the grasses. You'll see like a green ring on the lawn sometimes where the fairy circles, where the mushrooms come up repeatedly, and that's because they break down organic matter beneath the soil, and then the plants can actually use it. It's very cool. I don't know, yeah, I don't know why Steve moved to Tasmania. Probably because um, he was trying to get away from madness. <clears throat> yes, you can compost poison ivy. I recommend you put, if you're going to compost poison ivy, I would take it, tear it all off the trees, tear it up or whatever, lay it out on a driveway or gravel or a sandy area or something to just completely desiccate because it will reroot. So let it completely dry out and then throw it in a compost pile. That's right, molybdenum. <clears throat> yep, volcanic islands are good for soil, but you can you can mineralize your soil again with uh, kelp meal and you know C90. Other people have recommended that. But when I make the the Dave's fetid swamp water, what I would try to do is get materials from as broad a range as possible. So I'd often throw fish guts in there if I could get ocean fish. I knew that it had the micronutrients from the ocean. If I had um, uh, Seaweed, I throw it in there. This last batch, I threw in a quart of kelp meal into the fetid swamp water to rot down. <laughs> the fix to everything is just add salt. It will either live or die. So, um, we'll just run through one last time here. What is safe for the compost? Meat, safe, compost it. Manure from animals not fed, purchased grass feed, alfalfa, cottonseed meal, wood chips, leaves, chicken manure, chemical fertilizers are not going to destroy your garden for the next year like uh, amino pyrrolids and that sort of thing will. Kitchen scraps, um, bread is fine, shredded paper is fine, junk mail is fine. What is not safe? Biosolids, hay, probably straw, manure, grass clippings, mushroom compost, purchased compost, and cat manure, unless you want. Toxoplasmosis. If you want to be a crazy cat lady, throw it in. So if you have come in late and you're wondering why that list it sounds totally wrong to you, watch the rest of it. Go back. Um, let me thank our super chatters tonight. Thank you very much to Coffee and Tea. Thank you to Sir Hat. Thank you to Beach Bear, Karen Hill, Irish Kraut Bear. Uh, says, this knowledge is too valuable to be free. God bless. Thank you very much. And to Jacob B., thank you for the super chats. And um, welcome to Sir Hat and Liberty Not License. New members. I know, hey, why hey? Why would hey not be safe? You'll have to go back and watch the beginning. So, thank you guys very much for joining me tonight. I am still trying to gather materials. <clears throat> I'm still trying to gather materials for, um, I might be able to sing 30,000 years for you. If I can find it, I couldn't find it when I looked for it the other night. I, I don't know if I left it on my laptop or what. I keep, I keep losing the song. Find it. It's got to exist. Let's see if I can find it here. It must exist. the chords for it, but they are gone. I'm going to have to actually 
uh, record this song properly. I actually, I have a bass now, which is really exciting to me because I'm, I'm a better bass player, I think, even than I am a guitar player. I'm a, I'm a pretty good guitar player, but man, all the bass. I cannot find it, Carolyn. I am going to have to hunt through. I don't have everything together yet. I don't have all my hard drives working. But if I can take a rain check, I appreciate it. <clears throat> um, let's see. I have one that I can sing here. I'm trying to find one. I'm, I might find one. Let's see. I'll sing this one. <clears throat> you guys want an original song? One second. Sing this one to you guys. It's been a while since I sung this one.
is the song of the siren. So, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yes, this is an original song. Eventually, it's going to be recorded properly. <laughs> Miles of Totality says, Fork and destroy my cellular network. Heaven forbid. We break a single mushroom strand. We would never do that, would we, guys? We would never destroy a mycelial network. All right, you guys. Have a, a great rest of the evening. And um, thank you very much. We will, uh, we, will, we will be releasing an album before too long, I think. I am still working on getting together things that I can used to record. I only have a two input setup right now, so it's slowly bit by bit. So you guys have a um, have a great evening. I am going to be posting a video tomorrow on Pear Salsa, and it features the soon-to-be-hit country song, which sounds like it was recorded in a garage. Pears in Her Salsa. Pears in Her Salsa by David the Good, premiering tomorrow. So I'll see you all then. Have a great night. Hope to get some gardening in tomorrow. And I hope you guys are doing the same. Thank you very much for the um, last one here. Sunny Days and Sandy Toast sends a $2 super chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, David and Gardner friends. Nice to see you all. Have a great night. Thank you to... Um, <laughs> please put... Oh, I get it. Please put Don't Fork and Destroy My Cellular Network on the album. I don't even know. Do you know what stream that was? Miles of Totality, could you tell me what stream that was? I don't even remember. I write these songs at the top of my head. Um, that would be good, because I, I remember that now that you say it. It was funny. I'm going to stick around. I'm going to stick around for a minute to see if Miles of Totality can tell me which stream that was, because for the life of me, I have no idea. I will wait here for Miles of Totality to tell me in which stream perhaps he saw this crazy song that I wrote off the top of my head like almost everyone I ever wrote I don't know Miles of Totality says oh great then it's not gonna end up then on the album that I will record so I'm not sure anyhow uh, for my members I posted today uh, a video just for members only that you can see which is rather entertaining it's one I recorded last year and it was only on unauthorized.tv and now I posted it just for the members so I hope you guys can enjoy that um, and the other thing I posted for members today was Compost Everything the Movie which is a, a film I made a few years ago that I was really happy with and it kind of ties into our composting talk tonight so Dalai Lama Greenhouse on the album please yes definitely Thank you, Miles of Totality. If you find it, um, please email it to me because I am really, I really have no idea, <clears throat> but it would be fun. All right, good luck. Thank you all very much. Have a great night, and until next time, may your thumbs always.